Hello, Princess on a Pillow here. I am here to do a review slash recap with my opinion on 90 Day Fiancé Season 10, Episode 16. It's titled, With This Ring I The Way. Stupid title because nobody got married in this episode. Let's get started. So, first couple is uh, Gino and Jasmine. Gino took Jasmine wedding dress shopping. And uh, Gino refused to give her the credit card. Um, and she can't drive, so he had to go with her. And I'm glad he didn't give her that credit card, okay? So Gina, um, when they got to the wedding store, Gino told the sales lady that he's not spending over $1,000. But the stupid-ass sales lady put Jasmine in a dress that cost over $3,000. And the dress was nice. Nice dress. But it cost over $3,000 after he told her he wasn't spending over $1,000. She should have been smacked. I would have walked out of there. I would have walked out of there and said, you know what? Screw you. Screw your dress. I'm not um, paying over $1,000 for a dress. Okay? And that, that pissed me off. That pissed me off. It's like when you're buying a house and you tell them the, your price range and they take you to an expensive house, like um, $1,000 over your price range because they think you're going to fall in love with the house and say, oh, I, I'm going to get it anyway. I'm going to get it even though it's above my budget. I'm still going to get it. That's what they do. That's what these salespeople do. Assholes. And I'm here for Gino's budget because he had already given her money to buy a dress, but she didn't choose to use the money to buy something else. So I'm here for his only a thousand dollar budget. And plus he has to pay for everything else. He has to pay for the entire wedding. With no help. And no job. He has no job. Gino better put his foot down. Or call Dane to help him with the um, wedding. He already helped with the budding plants. So then next, the sales lady put Jasmine in a dress that cost over five thousand dollars. Or I think it was five thousand dollars. The nerve of this heifer. He told her his budget was a thousand. So you put her in a dress, a beautiful dress, that cost five thousand dollars. You think he's gonna say, okay, screw the thousand, I'll just go ahead and pay the five thousand. Is she ever effing mine? I ought to walk the hell out of there and flip some stuff up while I leave out too. <laughs> the nerve of her. She must be hard of hearing or something. Maybe she didn't hear that he said he's only planning on spending a thousand. A five thousand dollar dress. And Jasmine loved the dress. She begged Gino to um, buy the dress. Gino's like, no. So then the sales lady finally, ding, 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 the bell rang in her head. She put Jasmine in a dress, a $2,000 dress. Dress was cute. $2,000 dress. I would have still said no. I would have said, Heffa, I said a 1000 But since Jasmine liked the dress, Gino liked the dress, and it was closer to his budget, Gino said okay, and he accepted it. But I wouldn't have done it because by the time he buys that dress and buys the accessories like a veil, a tiara, a cover-up or a shawl because her shoulders are going to be out. So she's going to need a shawl. She's going to need jewelry. She's going to need earrings, bracelets, necklaces. She's going to need purse, shoes. You know what I'm saying? She's going to need accessories. And by the time he buys all that, he's going to pay over $5,000. He is. And then the sales lady had the audacity to drink champagne with them. She's drinking on the job. I knew that heifer was drunk. That's why she put Jasmine in a $5,000 dress. That heifer was drunk. She's drinking champagne all day. Um, next, Gino took Jasmine to a venue where he wants to have the wedding. And it's a barn. I mean, it's, it sounds bad, me saying a barn, but it was all right. It was, you know, a nice barn. A modern barn. <laughs> it wasn't a barn with hay and smells and cows and... Horses and pigs and crap running around. It was a indoor barn. Gino liked it. Jasmine liked it too. Even though Jasmine would rather have a beach wedding with just her and Gino. And she would rather have a beach wedding. She claims she would rather have a beach wedding with just her and Gino. Then if that's the case, why buy such an expensive dress? You and Gino are the only ones that's going to see it. She a lie. She don't want no um no wedding with just her and Gino. She wants a big wedding. But she wants her family at the wedding. That's the thing.
She the reason Gina Jasmine doesn't want Gino's family at the wedding is because she claims they don't like her. She thinks they don't like her, and she claims they may say something and ruin her special day. So Gina, G Gina, Gino, and Jasmine they meet some of his family at a restaurant just to talk to hash out their um, you know, their grievances with with Jasmine. And Jasmine told them that she is not going to hurt Gino and she wants them to accept her. And then she starts to cry because she knows her tears will get her some sympathy and her tears usually get her what she wants. So she starts to do her crying. Gino, and it worked because Gino's cousins, they, Gino's cousin, one of his cousin, well it was his cousin, the cousin wife, another relative and a nephew. And his cousin said that he didn't understand why a beautiful woman um, like Jasmine wanted to come to the States and steal Gino away. And he asked her why she couldn't find a man in Panama. And she said, well, Gino is a babe. Mm -hmm. Gino is the money. There's no other man in Panama stupid enough to put up with her attitude and spend all that money on her. Gino's the only one. That's why she chose Gino. The cousin's wife told Gino that told Jasmine that they um, don't know, they didn't know her. All they knew of her was seeing pictures of her in bikinis on the beach. But she said after she got to know Jasmine, she realized Jasmine is smart and funny, so now she likes Jasmine. She, she only likes Jasmine because Jasmine is smart and funny. Mm, whatever. So Jasmine apologized to Gino for being bitchy and being rude. And then Gino's nephew told Jasmine that he was afraid that she was going to break Gino's heart. But now he sees how much Gino loves Jasmine. So he's he'll accept Jasmine. So they all toast to Jasmine and Gino and they welcome Jasmine into their family. And everything is good or everything seems good for now. <laughs> Next is Clayton and Anna Lee. We see Clayton outside exercising. He let us know that he has everything squared away for the wedding. He told Anna Lee that he needs to lose 10 kilos before the wedding, which is the next day. He's going to lose lose 10 kilos in less than a day. 10 kilos is about 20 pounds. I'm pretty sure he won't be able to do that. He won't be able to do that at all. And Lee asked him how was his bachelor party. See, she brought up the party. She asked him how was his bachelor party. He said he swam and played. Played games, I guess. He asked her how was her bachelorette party. She should have never brought up the party. He asked her how was her bachelorette party. She said she had fun. The key word right there is fun. She said she had fun, right? She said, your sister surprised me with a stripper. Annalie is a liar. She had asked for a stripper. She had asked the, the woman to get her a stripper. In her confessional, she said she decided to be honest with Clayton and not keep another secret from him. So she has another secret that she's hiding from him? She has a secret that she's hiding from him, right? Annalie something else. Clayton told her, you ignored the rules. Because Clayton had said, no men, no strippers. So Clayton said, you ignored the rules. <laughs> and Lee said she thought the stripper was, was immigration because he was dressed as a cop. Then she bust out laughing. But Clayton was laughing. Clayton was pissed. So Annalie Lee decided to blame the sister. She said, your sister paid for it and I didn't want um, her to lose her money. <laughs> Clayton told her she could have said no. Annalie said, I did say no many times. I don't remember her saying no. I remember her laughing and taking pictures with the stripper is what I remember. And I remember him flapping his business all up in her face. Clayton need to check Annalie's phone. Mm -hmm, that's what you need to do. Check her phone and you'll see pictures of this stripper. Annalie is the queen of liars. She told Clayton that she told the stripper to get away from her. I don't remember any of that. Or maybe she did and they didn't film that part. But they filmed the other part with the stripper all up in her face. Gyrating and everything. She said she told us the stripper to get, away, to get away from her. Was this before or after he put his business in her face? Or before she took pictures of him? Or after she took pictures of him? I don't know. I don't understand why she's lying because he's going to see the, the episode. But Clayton is not listening to a word she has to say. He is jealous and he thinks she wants the stripper and not him. Clayton is pissed. So she starts to cry. Why is she crying? I don't know. He's just asking her questions. Mm, excuse me. He's asking her questions and she starts to cry. What's she crying for? 
Clinton told her, never again, never ever again in this world will you ever do that. And she walks off talking about she needs to leave this place. Need to leave this place and go where? Where the hell is she going to be going? She has no money. She don't know how to drive. She's in a foreign country and she don't speak the language. Where the hell is she thinks she's going? So she pretends to get her suitcase out, pretending like she's going somewhere. So then Clayton sees that she she got her suitcase out. He panics. He calls his sister and, you know, asking his, you know, telling his sister what's happening. And the sister said, oh, just go give her a hug. Because his sister knows she ain't going nowhere. This is The sister said, just go give her a hug. So Clayton told his sister that he is the victim and he is not apologizing. So then him and his sister, they got into a little argument. Meanwhile, Annalise telling the camera that it's best that she leave because she don't want to live her life like this. Like what? Him asking you a question and you refusing to answer? Like what? What has he done to you that you can't live like this? Annalise not going anywhere. She's full of shit. So Clayton, um, he walks through the house. He finds Annalise and he gives her a hug just like his sister told him to do. After they hug, they sit down to talk and she told him that she wanted him to drop the subject about the stripper and not to talk about it anymore. Clayton said he wants more details. <laughs> she told him that she already told him everything. She told him that he keep asking the same questions over and over again. Wait until he sees the damn episodes, but I, I would love to be around when he sees that episode. I'm like, what? He would be so hurt. But Clayton is not giving up. He wants to talk about the stripper. And he wants to talk about the stripper right now. So now, Annalise, she wants to punish Clayton. So she told him that they should sleep in separate bedrooms. She is so manipulative. She cried. That didn't work. She pretended to pack her bags. That didn't work. So now she's telling him, we're going to sleep in separate bedrooms. That's just to punish him because he's asking her questions she doesn't want to answer. Yeah, Annalie is very manipulative. Next is Sophie and Rob. Rob picked Sophie up from the hotel. And they gave each other a hug and told each other that they missed each other. Um, but Rob is still pissed. He's pissed that Sophie took her mother's side against him. And then he's pissed that she left to go, you know, spend the night with her mother. So I think he's looking for an apology from Sophie. On the drive home, he told her that she let she let him down. She wasn't on his team, and he felt alone. And Sophie apologized. But the apology, that wasn't good enough for him. When they got home, Rob is still on one. He, he told her he felt left out to dry with no support. So now at this time, what does he want from her? She already apologized to him. What now does he want from her? I think he wants her to uh, do black back flips while apologizing or jump on the roof and scream, I apologize, Rob. I don't know what he, what he wants from her. No, I know what he wants from her. He wants her to drop to her knees and beg for forgiveness. That's what he wants. She told him, I already apologize in the car. I don't know what else you want me to say. She told him to at least apologize for being disrespectful to her mother. So he apologized for disrespecting her mother. Then she brings up the four four a.m. the four yeah a.m. posting he did about her. Um, he tried to lie and say that the posting wasn't about her. But clearly, his erratic late night posting was about her. So they start to argue because he refused to apologize for that. She told him that his postings hurt her feelings, and she told him to say sorry. He refused to say sorry, so she starts to cry, and then she went off on him. So Rob, he starts to feel guilty, so he went ahead and apologized for the postings. And they talked it out, and she accepted his apology, and everything is good for now. Next up is Citra and Sam. They are standing outside trying to figure out how to set up for their um, set up the chairs and the food for their wedding. Sam is excited about the honeymoon. Citra is scared, and she should be. It's the next day, and um, it's time for Sam's conversion. Uh, Citra's father is showing, they're at the mosque. No, they're not at the mosque, they're still at the house. But Citra's father is showing Sam how to sit and letting him know that um, he has to pray five times a day. 
Then Citra's father, his name is Herman, used a translator app to talk to Sam. They go off together to talk, go off somewhere together to talk, and Herman asks Sam if he is ready for the wedding. Sam said yes, and some other stuff. Herman told Sam to take care of his daughter, to love her, to take care of her, uh, to cherish her until the day he die. But the Google Translator was messing up, and Sam only got what a, he only understood what half of what Herman was saying, but he nodded and said, yep, mm-hmm. <laughs> he understand what, what Herman said. So Herman told, Sam told Herman that he wants to be like him and his wife because they are the perfect example. That's shade to Sam's parents. And Herman is, he's happy with that, with that statement. So Herman gave Sam his blessing to marry Citra. Next, they go to the mosque for Sam's conversion. Sam has to cleanse himself three times and pray. And then he can't touch a woman after that. Not until after the conversion. And then Sam's father show up, but the mother didn't show up. I think the mother is selfish, stupid, and disrespectful. Um, so Sam was converted. Then they got married in the in Islamic way. And her um, Fitra's father cried. And I teared up a bit too. And I'm all for love. I hope they make it. Um, last but not least, it's Ashley and Manuel. They are in Miami for their wedding. And they found a spot on the beach where they plan on getting married. So they... Um, they go back to the Airbnb and they decide to call Manuel's mother. The mother gave them some advice. She told them to understand each other, respect each other, and adore each other. And then the mother started to cry. So then Ashley starts to cry. Manuel told his mother that he wished the family could be there for his wedding. The mother told him that she will pray that everything turns out nicely and it hurt her heart that she's not there for his wedding. Ashley told the mother that she can't imagine getting married without her parents. And she feels bad. She told the mother that she feels bad. She promised the mother to take care of Manuel so that um, put the mother at ease somewhat. Um, and I hope they make it. I really hope they make it. Next, Ashley found out that a storm is a coming and she may not be able to have her wedding outside. But Ashley is irrational. She's, a, she's an irrational person. She refused to make other arrangements for the wedding. Well, que sera, sera. Uh, this, that was the end of the episode. This is the end of my review. Thank you so very much for watching. Princess on the Pillow here. Bye.